focus on everything you do. You're better condition, you're better trained. You look like you're ready to play. Great focus, great effort. Now standing back, going to throw the deep ball down the right sideline, and it's going to be intercepted. He takes the snap, looks like he wants to run. He does up the middle of the field of 40. Link makes it over to the 30. He's on to the left side, the 20. Link to the 15. Link to the 10. Link to the 5. And Link is down near the goal line. Booker is hit by Jarvis Moss. He's on the 15, pounding hard, pushing the LSU defense back. He's still on his feet inside the 10. Oh, five. Looking to throw the ball down. Dallas Baker, he's got it! The juggling guts, Dallas Baker, the touchdown maker! He'll be hit, he'll go down as he's been sacked. Oh, my! It's a running play to Lump, and he loses the ball. It's a fumble, and the Gators are going to pick it up, and they're going to score a touchdown! The snap, the kick, it's been blocked again! Oh, my! It's been blocked again, and the Gators have won the game! He takes the snap, gives to Harvin. Harvin going to run the ball. 35-40, Harvin's in the clear, Harvin at the 40, into the secondary, to the 30, the 20, there he goes, you won't catch him, oh, mercy, mercy! The Florida Gators have won the 2006 Southeastern Conference Championship. It's a set back here now, Baker with the left, and Lee looks to throw the ball to Baker, and it's going to be caught, and it's going to be in there for a touchdown! The Florida Gators have won the national championship here at the University of Phoenix. The story of the 2006 national champion Florida Gators actually begins 100 years ago. In the fall of 1906, 15 players with no name, no school colors, and no fight song started a tradition that would grow into an orange and blue revolution. General James Van Fleet, President John Tigert, Bob Woodruff, Ray Graves, brick by brick, season by season, the tradition grew. Spurrier to Casey, Reeves to Alvarez, Emmett on the loose, and in 1996, an inspirational quarterback named Danny led the Gators on a magical ride to the first national title in school history. Back to pass, looking, looking, nobody open. Left, he runs right, 20, 15, 10, 5, to the pylon! Touchdown, Danny Werfel! Oh, my! And the Gators have won the national championship! The Florida Gators, the 1996 national champions! So, in this 100th year of Florida football, and exactly 10 seasons after the Gators' first national title, that 1996 championship team returned to the swamp to welcome the 2006 Gators onto the field. a good omen indeed. This team of destiny earned its spot with a 96 team as champions of college football. And this is their story. In the Gators' first two games of the 2006 season, Southern Miss and UCF came to Gainesville. Both with winning seasons and bowl game appearances in 2005, they came looking for an upset the Gators had something else in mind. Now he's going to fire a deep ball to the right sideline. It's going to be up for grabs, and it's going to be intercepted. Steps up, looks to throw the ball down toward the court of the end zone. He's got his receiver. Touchdown! With another handoff to win, running straight ahead, pounding his way to the goal line. He's in! 
Throws the ball deep down the sideline. It'll be caught, and it's a touchdown. Oh, my. Jamel Cornelius looks to throw and fires. It's going to be a ricochet and an interception. Picked off by the Gators' Reggie Lewis. People trying to run off to his left, trying to fend off the defender, and he's going to be hit, and he's going to be in for the touchdown. Oh, my. A 10, he's to the 5, he's down to the goal line. Touchdown, Easton Moore. Now looking to run the ball at the 45, and he's upended at the 42-yard line. Looking, looking, fires over the middle. He's got Harvin at the 50, at the 45, Harvin at the 40, 35, down on the sideline, the 30, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Oh, Percy, Percy, he's got a touchdown. Oh, my. Snap to Leak, and Leak hands it off to win off the right side. Win, power his way to the goal line, touchdown. Moore splits through a hole to the right side. More to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. He's off to the races. Green grass in front. Touchdown. Lock the ball down toward the end zone. Over the field. He's got a receiver. Touchdown. Dallas Baker. Now standing in to throw the ball deep down the field. And there's a beautiful throw and a great catch. Touchdown. Bubba Caldwell. With a 34-7 win over Southern Miss and a 42-0 shutout of UCF, the first two games were behind them, heading into the SEC schedule. Week three is known around the nation as Separation Week. And week three of 2006 would be no different. Last chance for you, UT seniors. Last chance for the last goal. Yeah. Last chance, Jamal. Let's go take some. The new secondary would be tested by Tennessee's talented receivers. And Tennessee would test them on the first play of the game. In the shotgun, Ainge, a short drop, pump fake, now standing back, going to throw the deep ball down the right sideline, and it's going to be intercepted. The Gators get an interception by Reggie Nelson at the 41-yard line. Here's a handoff to Harmon. Harmon skipping off the left side to the 50. He's to the 45. He's to the 40. He levels the shoulder. He powers his way for a first down. Tebow calling for the ball. Now running with it. Trying to cut up field. He's got running room. He gets inside the 30-yard line inside the 25. Leak in the shotgun. Takes the snap on play action. Rolling left. Now stepping back and throwing the football down to the right side. He's got a receiver. And he's going to be in the end zone. They got him to the pylon. And Jamel Cornelius has scored on a 21-yard touchdown. And with that early success and some strong defense by the Gators, the crowd was quiet. It. Even more so when a Gator freshman made his presence known. Two, very high, very deep. James backpedaling. This is a monster punt. James at the 17 yard line, looking for running room to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, 35. He's to the 40. James to the 45, to the 50. He's in Tennessee territory. And he just got tripped up at the 49 yard line. But this is the SEC, where road games are tough. And a gadget play put Tennessee up 10 to 7 at the half. Now let's get the offense to football. Let's play the best half of football we've ever played. Dallas, right now, make the big play. Right, get the ball. Best man, best condition, football team win. Early in the second half, Tennessee added to its lead. Now down by 10, the determination on the sideline was evident, and the Gator defense knows it must come up with a stop. She's taking the ball and runs straight up, and there's Ray McDonald who comes in and pinches down. And Ainge on a play action is flushed out of the pocket. He's into trouble. Leak still back, looking to throw. Slings the ball down the field. He's got a receiver. It's a catch made Bubba Caldwell. Here's the snap to Leak. Leak standing back, singing a slant over the middle of the field of the 40 yard line. He's got Renee Singer running the ball down to their sideline, and he's finally shoved out of bounds at the 11 yard line. Tebow at quarterback going to run the football to the 10, inside the 10, and here comes the pressure. He looks to throw the ball in the end zone. It's going to be a touchdown. Urban Myers. Sermon message all week is you've got to be tough. I asked him point blank to find toughness. He defined it as two guys going out behind the barn and fighting and no one there to break it up. It's a fight tonight. Here's the handoff to win, veering off to the right to the 40, the 45, the 50 in Tennessee territory, the block in front of the 40 yard line and down to the 35 yard line. Leak standing back looking to throw. Fires the ball to the right side. He's got a receiver. There's Dallas Baker to the 10, to the 5. He's in for the touchdown. Oh my! Dallas Baker. Is your touchdown maker, and the game is tied. We've got 20 20 vision. Run play action, he's under a blitz, and he's hit, and he throws the football. That could be a loose ball. They're gonna throw a flag in on the play, and it's all good for the Gators. Ain't dropping back, looking to throw, and fires the ball, and it's gonna be intercepted. Oh my, the Gators have picked it up, and the Gators have the football with a one point lead. And that's gonna be the final play of the ball game. 
here on the turf of Tennessee. The Florida Gators have rallied from a 10-point deficit midway through the third quarter, and they have beaten the Tennessee Volunteers by a scant one-point win. Inside the numbers, the Gator offense produced 320 yards while defensively holding the Vols to just 220 yards. Week four saw Rich Brooks and the Kentucky Wildcats come to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Florida's win over Tennessee gained attention from ESPN and the network aired the game to a national television audience. The Gators got to work early. Brings a man in motion and now on the man in motion takes the ball and it's gonna be a, a reverse pass and it goes back to Leak on a trick play. Leak is standing back to throw and he's got a receiver quarantined. All alone, touchdown, Jamel Cornelius. Oh my, 33 yards as the Gators razzle-dazzle them early for the first score of the game. With 1.59 remaining in the half, Kentucky managed to take a brief 7-6 lead. The Gators were not about to let Kentucky go to the locker room with any momentum. Leak standing back, looking to throw, fires the ball down the field. He's got a receiver. It's Baker again, breaks the tackle, still on his feet inside the 25, down the left sideline. He's out of bounds at the 19-yard line. There now is a handoff on a running play. Here comes Deshaun Wynn to the 10, to the 5, a cut back up the middle. He's in for the touchdown. Up 12 to 7 to open the second half. Let's go as a wing back off to the right. And then now here's the handoff to win. Hole opens. He's got a first down. He's in the Kentucky secondary, and he coughs up the football. It squirts way forward. It's a loose ball coming way down to the 30 yard line. The Gators got Billy Lance go down to recover the fumble. There's the hand off the leak, handing off to Moore, running straight ahead, Keaston Moore, he's in for the score! To this point in the season, the Gator defense is number one in the SEC against the run. And they were relentless. Tebow continued to chew up yards on the ground. Going right to the 20, Tebow running, stiff arming inside the 20, pushing forward. And just when they've made adjustments to Tebow. Leak rolling right, standing and planning, looking to throw. Cornelius Ingram, right side, stretching to the pylon. He's in! C.I. with a touchdown in the near corner. With a 26-7 victory, Florida was 4-0. The fans celebrated with the team. The Gator defense held Kentucky to just 249 yards, sacking Kentucky five times. They pile up 514 yards of offense. In week five, almost 4,000 people were on hand for the Gator Walk as the team arrives to take on Alabama. Adrenaline created by the raucous environment had the Gators flying to the ball on defense. John Parker Wilson on play action, dropping back, wanting his pass, stepping up now, and he is hit, and oh, man! Here comes Alabama, but Wilbur gets the ball away, a very high kick. Javier Arenas going back at the 12-yard line, and oh, my! He makes the catch, and he also got hit. My, oh, my, did he get hit by James Smith? Scrambling, rolling left, still wanting to make a play. Fires the ball, it's deflected, and now on the sideline, it's going to be intercepted. Taken back by the Gators, Ryan Smith on the left sideline. Oh, my, the Gators have got a takeaway. But a fluke fumble gave Alabama an early 10 to nothing lead. Starting on their own five-yard line, the Gators were determined to take back control of the game. Rolling off to the left, goes underneath. There's Latsko, left side 30, 35-yard line. Billy Latsko, a first down. Tebow all alone. Takes his captain runs off the left side to the 45-yard line. He's got a first down. Leak takes the snap, looks like he wants to run and does up the middle of the field of 40. Leak makes it over to the 30. He's off to the left side to 20. Leak to the 15. Leak to the 10. Leak to the 5. And Leak is down near the goal line. Here's the snap. Tebow trying to run off the left side. He goes hard in. Touchdown, Tim Tebow. Touchdown. They too tough. Can you block them? Can you block them? Defense, you did a hell of a job. Make play. Make play. 
you want to know some defense? Offense just took it 95 yards. Come together as a team, get that done. They got another one coming right now. Moore hole opens left side, he runs through it, got a first down to the 40 yard line. Deke rolls off to his left, looking to make a throw, tosses it out to Cornelius, he makes the catch. There's the snap to Leak. Leak swings it out to right side. He's got his receiver out there. It's Bubba Caldwell to the 10, to the 5, near sideline. Hurdles in. Touchdown! Oh, man! The Gator front seven continued harassing tied quarterback John Parker Wilson. John Parker Wilson under a blitz. Throws the ball, and it's going to be batted around. It's going to be intercepted. The ball comes free, and it's a loose ball scramble, and I think the Gators will recover this one, too. Transfer cornerback Ryan Smith had his second pick of the day, creating an opportunity that Florida's seniors would seize upon. Leak on a play action, looking to throw the ball down and up for Dallas Baker. He's got it! The juggling gets Dallas Baker, the touchdown maker! Oh, my! With the score now 21 to 13. Wilson to throw, fires down the field, interception. Reggie Nelson, right side 50, Nelson 40, Nelson down the sideline 30, Nelson 20. Run, Reggie, run. A cut back to the 10, a touchdown. How oh The Gators had moved to 5 0, oh, and its 12th consecutive win at the Swamp. UF's homecoming game brought several thousand visitors to campus for the annual Fall Classic. Normally a game saved for weaker teams, this would not be a typical homecoming challenge. For the second time in the young season, Florida would face a top-ranked team. The Tigers from LSU came to Gainesville, setting the stage for a dramatic power swing in the SEC. ESPN's College Game Day wasted no time in deciding where its show would be staged. <laughs> it's going to be Albert the Alligator and Mike the Tiger today. Our ninth visit here to Gainesville ties Columbus for the most. We've been in 20 games involving the Florida Gators. Florida knew that this would be a game of big plays. Down by a touchdown early on, it would be special teams that would ignite the Gators. There's the snap. LSU coming in. The, the kick gets away. Fair catch for Jackson. 35 and it. It's a loose ball. And James Smith looked like he had it. But still a scramble is on inside the 20 yard line. And it's a wild scramble for the football. And the Gators have won the ball. Oh, my. Now here's the snap to Tebow. Tebow going to try and run the ball off the left side of the 20. Tebow to the 15, pounding hard, pushing the LSU defense back. He's still on his feet inside the 10. Oh, my. He's down to the five yard line. There's the snap, Tebow gonna try and run, get down low, surge in, and he's near the goal line, and he's in! Tim Tebow, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown! With the crowd ignited, Florida's defense was put to the test. Here's Russell, handing it off to Broussard. Broussard is hit, Brandon Sider may have stepped him. Demarcus Russell, quarterback dropped the snap, and it's loose, and let's see as they unpile on a mishandle. Russell, I don't think, ever got it. Gators say we've got it. And the Gators have the ball. Oh, my! Florida had dodged a bullet, but on the ensuing drive, the LSU defense was tough. He needs to get it all. There's the snap, and the kick is away. It's a pretty good kick. Fair catch being signaled for by Shelly Another Jackson. big play by the special teams breathed new life into the Gators. And on a day of special plays, the defense would not be denied. Russell dropping back and throws the ball down the right sideline, and it's going to be intercepted by the Gators. Ryan Smith at the 15. Smith coming to the 20. Smith stumbling and still on his feet to the 25. Leak looking to throw, fires to Dallas Baker. He's got a catch at the LSU 48-yard line, spinning a field to the 46-yard line. Leak looking to throw, swings it out to the left side. He's got the receiver, Jamel Cornelius, down the left sideline. Cornelius inside the 10. Second down and goal, one-yard line, left hand. Tebow, at quarterback, takes the snap, and again, looks to run, now stops and throws the ball into the end zone for Tate Casey, and Casey makes the catch! Oh, my! It was a dump pass to the tight end! Tate Casey, touchdown! They have not stopped us once this entire game. We're slowing ourselves down a little bit with penalties. Stay on schedule, move up and down the field. You've softened them up. They're a little confused. Are they confused yeah, out there with some yeah, of the stuff going yeah, on? Talking, they don't know what's going on. You punch them in the face, the first possession. Here we go, we're underway as Deha strikes the ball, high end over and in kick, coming down the three yard line and muff by Doucette at the two, and Doucette is hit, loose ball in the end zone, up for grabs, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be a safety. Now here's Leak throwing the pass underneath, and there's Bella Caldwell taking that pass and turning up field to the 45 yard line. He's got another first down. Here now is Leak handing the ball off to Harvin, trying to come to the left side. Harvin to the 40, 
underneath. Harvard spinning inside the 35-yard line. A nice run that time. Tim Tebow comes in to quarterback the Gators. Tebow calling for the ball and now stops, backs up, wants to throw the pass, got a wide open quarantine receiver, and it's caught for a touchdown! How Lewis Murphy! How much! A truly special day in the slot. Florida 23. LSU 10. Listen up, listen up. I'm going to give you the speech every time we see your eyes. That was not a good one. That was a great win. Inside the numbers, the hard fought victory came from the Gators forcing five LSU turnovers. And on Monday, the Gators found themselves at number two in the country. After a heartbreaking defeat at Auburn, the Gators had a bye week on October 21st. And on October 28th, the annual Florida-Georgia showdown in Jacksonville was on hand. With all the color and pageantry of this grand tradition, the fans were ready, and so were the players. Waiting two weeks to play, the Gators and their coach were pumped up. Four to six seconds, great, great, great effort. Four to six seconds of strain. Four to six seconds of strain. They're expecting a top five football team, that's what they're gonna get. On low! While Georgia had been struggling at times with SEC opponents, the Gators knew that this rivalry brings out the best in college football, and anything can happen. Florida's offense got to work early. Dropping back, looking to throw, and fires the ball. He's got a receiver setting down over the middle of the field. Bubba Caldwell with a catch in Georgia territory. Right hit. 87 Tebow kind of looks 16 days on one there's the stamp. Tebow wants to run straight up. Off left tackle the 30-yard line. He breaks the tackle inside the 20. He's still running inside the 50. And finally, Tebow taken down. Leak again, going to run option. And now fakes it to Harvin. Pitches it on and around to Caldwell. Caldwell coming to the 10. Turning the corner to the 5. Down near the goal line. He's in. Touchdown. Oh, my. And the defense was just as tenacious. Stafford of the gun. Dropping the throw. Swings it out to the right. Catch for Henderson. And a big hit made by the Gators' nickelbacker, Tremaine McCullum. Stafford under some pressure, and he'll be down. He's hit. Harris hit, and he's knocked down again. The Gators got pressure. Stafford dropping back. Wanted to throw. He's under some pressure. They'll grab him. They'll throw him down. He cannot release the ball. Another sack. Brandon James continued his tear through the Georgia special teams. And it's coming down at the 34 for James. Surveys the field. Comes up to the 40. Veers to the right. Now looks for a blocker. Breaks one tackle at the 39 to the 40. He's to the 50. He's in Georgia territory. And Brandon James is shoved out of bounds. Playing in his final Florida-Georgia game, Chris Leak was cool and collected under the heavy Georgia pass rush. There's Leak in the shotgun, dropping back, wanting to throw, and fires the ball down the field. He's got a wide open receiver, Bubba Caldwell, inside the 10, breaks the tackle inside the 5, and he's down in, touchdown! Oh, my! Florida's defense dominated the half. Player runs right into the Gators. Stafford looks to throw the ball down toward Massaqua, and it's going to be intercepted. It was underthrown, and there's Ryan Smith with the pick. He's got his fifth of the season. Limiting Georgia to just 81 yards of total offense, the Gators enjoyed a 14 to nothing halftime lead. To open the half, the Gator defense was hungry to attack. It's a running play to Lumpkin. He loses the ball. It's a fumble. And the Gators are going to pick it up. And they're going to score a touchdown. Free McDonald, who picked it up and returned it for a touchdown. For the Gator defense, the word of the day was pursuit. And the defense was again spectacular, holding Georgia to just 215 yards while forcing five turnovers as Florida picked up an important SEC East victory with a win over the Bulldogs. In week nine, the travel-weary Gators would find themselves in Nashville playing an ever-improving Vanderbilt team. The Commodores had lost some very close games to top-ranked teams. Oh, you think about this? Quarterbacks against their quarterbacks. O-line versus their O-line. Eyes up here. Running backs against their running backs. Position group domination. And then Nixon hands the ball off on a running play to Jackson Garrison. He got knocked down by Derek Harvey. There's the snap. The kick has been blocked. The Gators got in there. It was Ryan Smith who got in there and blocked it. And the Gators will have the ball at the five-yard line. Leak is in the gun. There's the snap. Leak stepping up. Now going to want to run the ball. Going straight ahead near the goal line. Down toward the goal line. And he's in. Touchdown. After a two-point conversion, the Gators were up eight to nothing. While the Gator defense continued to show discipline, the Commodores defense dug in as well. And Vandy showed they would be tough at home. The difference in the early stages would be this breakup by Tony Joyner to keep the Commodores at just six points. Playing on the road in the SEC is never easy, and the Gators focused their efforts on what Coach Meyer called the Leak to Baker show. Chris Leak 
far in the shotgun on a play action, standing back to throw, fires it down the field for Baker. He's got a catch at the 28-yard line and dropped near the 26-yard line. Leak dropping back, looking to throw the ball. Left side, wide open, Dallas Baker, the touchdown maker. Oh, my. The defense continued to key on Vandy's playmakers. Brett ups into punt. There's the snap. Here's the kick, and it's been blocked again as Reggie Nelson has gotten the block, and the Gators will recover the ball at the 28-yard line. Oh, my! The Gators would finish the half up 15-6 with key stops by the D-line and opportunistic plays by Ryan Smith, now amongst the nation's elite in interceptions. Looking to throw. Zings it to the left side. It's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Ryan Smith. He had beautiful inside coverage. We got another half of the ball, baby. Let's go. We got another 30 minutes. Throwing to Baker, near sideline, he's got a catch in a big game in Vanderbilt territory. Making the left, going to try and run the ball straight out in the middle of the field. He's wide open for the touchdown run. Now veering to his left at the 30-yard line, coming up field to the 35, he's to the 40. He's at midfield, he's got runners out in front of him at the 40. And finally he got knocked down there at the 36-yard line. Looking to make a throw, and he tries to throw the ball, and it's broken up. Nixon again on a play action. Here's Moss, Moss got him in. And while Vandy battled to the end as they had in every game they played this year, it was the Gators earning another SEC road win. Little did the Gators know that four hours later, they would be the SEC Eastern Division champs as LSU defeated Tennessee. After being away from the swamp for five weeks, the players were glad to be on the home turf of the Gator Nation. Y'all know this is a big game. We need this. Y'all already know what I'm talking about. Let's go, baby. Gators on three. One, two, three. Hey. Week in and week out, the Southeastern Conference had shown more parity than perhaps any other Division I football conference. Week 10 would be no different as Steve Spurrier returned to the swamp with his South Carolina Gamecock team. While South Carolina would go ahead in the early stages, the Gators were quick to respond. Leak rolling right, now stopping, looking to throw the ball back to the left for Dallas Baker, and it's juggled, and it's going to be caught! Oh, my! Dallas Baker, a juggling catch! The touchdown, Baker! Dallas Baker's juggling catch would send the Gators to the locker room tied at seven. Offense had three possessions right down the field. Every time, right down the field. Every time we come back to the huddle, buckle it up, everything you have on every snap. Defense, get out of third downs. Come back, get in there as a group, and do it again on the next play. I told you before we started this game, we own the SEC. Let's, Let's take the whole thing. Let's, Let's go, go get you got, you got 30 minutes. Let's go get the whole thing, CI. Why not? Let's go. Why the hell not? Let's go get the whole thing. Angle to the left. There's the snap. The set down. The kick has been blocked. It's been blocked, and the Gators are going to recover the ball at the 47 yard line. Off the wind, running up the middle of the field, into the 30, into the secondary of the 40. A chippy off the right hash. There's the snap, set down, kick up, and it splits the uprights. It is good, and we're tied at 10 and 10. After the Gamecocks score a go-ahead TD, the Gators would make another special play. There's the snap, the set down, the kick has been blocked, and the Gators can pick it up in return. Reggie Nelson trying to scoop it up. He does, but they tackle him. There's the snap to Leak, and he keeps the ball. He's going to run the ball. Leak going to run. 30. Leak cuts inside the 25, and Leak gets down to the 22-yard line. Tebow takes the snap. He's going to run straight up the middle of the field. He's inside the 10. He's inside the 5. He's in for a touchdown. Oh, ball. Oh, Tim Tebow touchdown. Oh, my. The Gators have tied the game on a Tebow run. The lead hangs in the balance on the foot of Chris Hetland for a PAT. Snap. Good kick, good. Gators take the lead. With eight seconds on the clock, South Carolina moved into Gator territory, hoping for a long field goal. A chance to win the game for South Carolina. And Suckups had a lot of time to think about it. Here we go. From 48 yards. And the ball game. The snap, the kick. It's been blocked again. How oh my! It's been blocked! an insane asylum in the swamp for the first time in a decade. And the swamp stays in the hands of the orange and blue. 
One for the record books. It was three blocked kicks that delivered Florida's ninth win. Week 11 against Western Carolina would be the final home game for the 2006 Gators. Emotions ran high in the locker room. Let's go, man. We got to leave out of here with a winning record. Let's go, let's go. All these things, you heard me? And with the emotion of senior day, the veterans and newcomers put on a show for the fans with a commanding 62 to nothing win. 35-40, up the middle of the field, he's at the 50, he's at the 40, he's coming near sideline to 30, one man to be to the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Now fires deep long, down to Riley Cooper, he's got it, and he streaks in for a touchdown! Now 10 and 1, the last game of the regular season was here. Having beaten Tennessee and Georgia earlier in the year, the Gators traveled north to face yet another rival at Florida State. Be the best team in college football today. Be the best team, be the best running back, best quarterback, best goal line, best wideout in college football. And Rutherford on a short drop makes the first pass, throws it out to the right, and Reggie Nelson comes up and makes the tackle. Rutherford on play action, dropping back, and he'll be hit, he'll be dropped as the Gators get a sack on him. Here's Rutherford, handing the ball off to Lorenzo Booker, and Booker is hit by Jarvis Moss. Dropping back under some pressure, looks to throw the ball down the right side, it is incomplete, and Richie Nelson again levels a blow on the FSU intended receiver. It will be their third three and out. And it was Chris Leak's recognition of the blitz that got the Gators on the board. Leak in the gun, takes a snap, here comes a blitz, he throws it out quickly to Caldwell at the 40 yard line, first down, down the sideline, in FSU territory, he's down the sideline, the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, and he will score, touchdown! In the second quarter, it was a Percy Harvin highlight reel. Harvin the tailback, here's Leak on an option to the right, gives it to Harvin, Harvin with the ball, gonna run to the 40, 45 50. He's down the near sideline, the 40, and he's run out of bounds on the FSU sideline. And now here they're going to run the ball, and here's Harvin going to run the ball near sideline, the 30. He's to the 20. He's to the 10. Near sideline. Harvin is going to take it all the way for a touchdown for the Gators. Oh, my. The second half, Florida's defensive pressure continued to frustrate FSU. Weatherford dropping back, looking to throw, lobs the ball down the left sideline. It'll be intercepted as Reggie Nelson sprinted over from the safety spot. In the shotgun, Drew Weatherford takes the snap. Weatherford steps back a couple of yards, looks to throw the ball toward the end zone. It's going to be intercepted in the end zone. Taken away by the Gators, Tremaine McCullum. Weatherford dropping back, wanting to throw. Fires a deep ball down toward the right side. Ryan Smith going back, and he has got it. He's made the interception. Oh, my. But in the fourth quarter, the Knolls tie the game. And Chris Leak began what would be one of the best drives of his Florida career. There's the snap to Leak. Leak looking, looking, and fires the ball left side. He has Dallas Baker. Leak dropping the throw under some pressure. Zings the ball down the field. He's got a receiver, Cornelius Ingram, in some traffic, and he will make the catch. Leak looking to throw. Hangs it up toward the end zone for Baker. He's there. He got it. Touchdown, Dallas Baker. The touchdown maker. And the Gators lead 20-14. Oh, my. Last guy to bring him up here, and his comment was, "Why, well, just let's just throw it every single play, which he says every, just about every game. Finally listened to him, brought us down in that game, went and drive the whole way down, <laughs> didn't run the ball once. Chris Lee, get up here. Hey, 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 hey. Chris, you want to throw that, oh. I see a lot of young players, and their old guys take care of the young guys, young guys take care of the old guys. We're on a mission. We're going to Atlanta. Get us a ring. On a mission, the Gators embarked. So did Gator Nation, with fans in the orange and blue packing Atlanta's Georgia Dome as Florida squared off with Arkansas and their dangerous tailback tandem for the SEC championship. It would be a test, the league's best rushing offense against the league's best run defense. Arkansas comes quickly. A toss sweep to McFadden, running to the left, and the Gators run it down as they got Jarvis Moss out there to lead the pursuit. Here's Arkansas on a snap play. They give the ball to McFadden, trying to turn the corner, and there is Dorian Monroe. There's the snap, the set down, the kick is up, on the way, and it is good. Hedlund splits the uprights, and the Gators take the lead. There's the snap, and the kick has been blocked. The Gators have blocked it, and it's a free ball for the Gators to try and pick it up, and they're going to recover. Here's Leak going to run the football. He gets it to nine, tries to turn the corner, breaks a tackle, at the five, and he's done, hurdled at the end zone. He's in. Touchdown. And as it had all year, 
Florida took advantage of its opportunity. Here's Dick now, handing the ball off to Jones, trying to run right, and the Gators make a great play. Jarvis Moss got in the backfield, slowed him down. Nice job in there, that way it works. Tigers lead, rolling right, throws the ball right side, he's got Cornelius Ingram inside the 40-yard line. C.I. gets down to the Razorbacks, 35-yard line. There's the snap, Leak dropping back, looking, looking, fires the ball down left side, he's got a receiver, Harvard with a catch, Harvard will score! Touchdown! Oh my! While the Razorbacks scored a touchdown late in the first half, the Gators had played great football and led 17-7. But to open the second half, the Razorbacks scored a pair of touchdowns that energized their fans and their defense. The momentum had swung and Florida needed something big. And midfield Reggie Fish, and now the Gators are gonna fake it deep in their own territory, and here they come on the run. They're gonna come down to the sideline, Jamel Cornelius to run the ball for a first down. Florida's offense was unable to move the ball on the next three plays, and was again in a punting situation. There's the snap, and Wilbur will kick the ball, and he hits a mile high, beautiful punt. Back to the three yard line and bobbled by Arkansas. Down in the end zone, a loose ball. Gators get it. Touchdown! 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 Oh my! Wendy Pierre Louis! Oh my! Touchdown! Gators have taken the lead. Now up 24 to 21. Florida had three things the lead, momentum, and Brandon Silas. All right, here's Arkansas. Felix Jones taking a handoff, running off left side, and there again is Brandon Seiler to come up and make the play for the Gators. And Dick hands it off to McFadden, and he'll be hit and drop. And the Gators got great pursuit that time. Earl Everett got in there to slow it up, and then Seiler and Harris finished off McFadden. Out of a nice set, Arkansas wants to run the ball. Here's McFadden getting a handoff, and Joe Cohen and company grabs him. And when the Gators got the ball back, they showed the nation they have a fast runner of their own. Chris Leak, that quarterback, has Harvin coming in motion. Leak takes the snap, gives to Harvin. Harvin going to run the ball. 35 40. Harvin's in the clear. Harvin at the 40. Into the secondary to the 30. The 20. There he goes. You won't catch him. Oh, mercy, mercy. He's just gone 67 yards for a touchdown. Oh, man. The Razorbacks didn't go easily and pulled off a trick play to pull within three. Florida then showed that it had a few tricks of its own. Kibo takes the snap and now pitches the ball back and it come around to Caldwell. Caldwell now throws the ball to the end zone for Tate Casey. Touchdown! Oh my! And the Gators tonight have got great defense, great special teams, and they've outrushed Arkansas offensively. Late in the fourth quarter, it was the Gator defensive backs who put on the show. Throw the deep ball down the right sideline, and it's going to be intercepted. The Gators get an interception by Reggie Nelson. There's the snap, and Dick again dropping back to throw. Hangs it up down toward the end zone, and Ryan Smith is there. He's got an interception. Ryan Smith has got another pick. That's it. The game is over. The Florida Gators have won the 2006 Southeastern Conference Championship. Oh, my. They've won it here in Atlanta to equal the most wins for the Gators in a single season. Their 12th win of the year as the Gators defeat Arkansas tonight here in Atlanta. It's the Gators 38 and Arkansas 28. The 2006 Florida Gator football team had one of the toughest schedules in the country, having to face Tennessee, Alabama, LSU, Auburn, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida State, and finally, Arkansas. With a 12-1 record and the 2006 SEC championship, this team would truly go down in Gator history as one of the finest to ever wear the orange and blue. The following evening, the Gators found out how the rest of the nation felt about their impressive year. And with that, the Gators discovered their special season. The 100th year of Florida football was far from finished they would be playing for a national championship.
an eerily similar turn of events that mirrored the 96 season, the Scrappy Gators had battled their way through the toughest ranked schedule in America to earn a shot at Ohio State. Not only were the Buckeyes a consensus number one, but came into the game a prohibitive favorite. It would be five long weeks of practice, five weeks of listening to the media, labeling them as underdogs with virtually no chance of winning the title. Bull week in Glendale, Arizona was no different. Guys, Troy Smith, are you more afraid of his arm or his legs? We're not afraid of Troy Smith at all. I don't believe that, uh, you know, that's something that you, I mean, that, that's, that's not what this is. Uh, he's a great player. Uh, he has a great arm and, and, and he can run the ball. But uh, them are definitely strengths, but don't get it confused. We're not afraid at all. And the so-called underdog Gators took to the field, ready for the fight of their lives. Adding fuel to the fire, the Buckeyes approached the 50 during pregame. Yeah, they're really number one. Four to six seconds, as hard as you go, as hard as you can. Great effort, great focus. Four to six seconds, line up and go again. Two, two, three, one, two, three. Two, three. The Ohio State contingency was loud and hostile, even more so on the game's first kick. Florida, Ohio State. National championship game underway. Flash bulbs popping. Kick is in the air. A short kick at the eight yard line brought back by Ginn. Between the hash marks, he's across the 20 yard line and across the 30, across the 40, coming down the near sideline. He's turning the 40. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. And he's going to go all the way as Ted Ginn has electrified the University of Phoenix Stadium crowd. If the Gators were in shock and awe of mighty Ohio State, they didn't show it. Now Harbin comes in motion. There's a snap to leak. A quick swing out to Harbin on the left side. Harbin the 45. Harbin gets to the 41-yard line. Billy Lansko, a wing back. Off to the left, comes in motion. There's the snap to Leak. Leak on a play action, looks to throw the ball to Lansko. Makes a catch at the 30 yard line, gets inside the 25, and Lansko down to the 22 yard line. All right, the Gators get Tim Tebow into the game now, along with Chris Leak. Now, Leak goes off to the left, and the direct snap comes to Tebow. He runs straight up the middle of the field, and Tebow pounding his way, getting inside the 15 yard line. Baker to the left, and Leak looks to throw the ball to Baker, and it's going to be caught, and it's going to be in there for a touchdown. Dallas Baker, the touchdown maker, all alone, and the Gators score on their first possession. The seven-play drive showed balance and poise, something the national media had doubted about Florida, and a sign of things to come. No backs, leaving Smith all alone. Smith going to try and run the ball, duck up inside, now clear to the right, and he runs right into the Gators' speed there at linebacker. Out of the shotgun, Troy Smith takes the snap, looks and looks, he's under some pressure, and he'll be hit, he'll go down as he's been sacked. Oh, my! Trips to the right, twins to the left, and now Wynn comes in motion, lines up as a setback to the right. Here's Leak rolling out to the right, throws to Quinn the Singer. He makes the catch inside the 20, CI inside the 10, and out of bounds, and it's his first down, and goal to go for the Gators. Harvin comes in motion. There's the snap to Leak. They're going to run the option to Harvin to the left. Harvin tries to turn the corner to five down near the goal line. He's in! Touchdown, Mercy Harvin! Ohio State had not given up more than 10 points in the first half all season. The Gators put up 14 in the first quarter and pushed for more. Here now, Troy Smith dropping back to throw. He's under pressure from Derek Harvey. Harvey looking to get him, and he gets him. He sacks him. Harvey had too much speed. Here's Smith looking to throw and sings the ball, and it's going to be intercepted. Oh, my! The Gators got to pick Reggie Lewis with the interception, and the Gators take it away. So far, the Buckeyes have no answer for the Gator offense. Here now, Leak on a play action, standing back to throw. Fires down the field, he's got C.I. Cornelius Singer with a catch and a first down in Buckeye territory. Here's Leak looking to throw, and he fires. He's got a receiver and a catch made inside the 20-yard line as Bubba Caldwell makes the grab. There's the snap to Leak. Leak options now, pitches on it, come around to the left side. Here comes Bubba Caldwell trying to get inside the 10-yard line. He's got a first down. There's the snap, Leak hands it off to Wynn. Wynn running hard, getting down to the goal line, twisting his way in. Touchdown! Touchdown! Deshaun Wynn is in, and the Gators lead 
20 to 7. Ohio State managed to spark their fans with this touchdown by Antonio Pittman, but the Gators stayed focused. There's the snap now, Leak rolling off to the right, looking, looking, fires to Cornelius Ingram on the sideline, he makes the catch! Single receiver to the left and four to the right, and here's a swing out pass to the right side, coming to Harbin, Harbin to the 30, breaks a tackle, it's inside the 30-yard line, inside the 25-yard line, and finally he's out of bounds at the 23. Chris Hetland, his first field goal attempt in the national championship game, it's not a chippy, 43 yards, snap, set down, kick is up, it looks good, it's center deep, it is good! Dead solid, perfect from 43. Hetland's field goal fired up his teammates, and they play inspired on defense. Here's the snap to uh, Smith. He's going to try an option it out to Wells to the right side, and Wells can't get the first down. Troy Smith trying to take the snap. I think he bumbled the football. He tried to take the quarterback sneak, and that little bobble to the ball, I don't think he made the 30 yard line. Fourth and less than a yard for the Buckeyes. Backs in an eye set. They're going to hand the ball off, and here's Wells, and he's second effort, getting very close to the 30-yard line. He didn't make it, and the Gators have stopped Ohio State. An improbable turnover on downs led to another long field goal by Hetland. Ohio State fans may not have heard of Harvey, Moss, McDonald, or Cohen, but as the night wore on, the D-line in blue made its presence known. Troy Smith at quarterback, dropping back seven yards, looking, looking, finding some heat. He'll be hit, he'll be dropped, he loses the football. It's a fumble, and picked up by the Gators, Derek Harvey. Oh, my! Gators take it away, and they've got first down and goal to go at the Ohio State five-yard line. And the Gators were smelling blood. Tim Tebow comes in the game at quarterback. Lance goes shifts off to the left. There's the snap to Tebow, trying to run to the left. Tebow lowers that shoulder and works his way to the three-yard line. Third down, goal, one yard line. Caldwell goes in motion. There's the snap to Tebow. Tebow rolling left, going to throw the ball. Right on the receiver. Touchdown, Bubba Caldwell. Oh, my. Tim Tebow delivers his fifth touchdown pass of the year. And the Gators score again. More than 10,000 of the Gator Nation faithful rock the O'Connell Center. Impossible, improbable, unbelievable. The halftime scoreboard told the story. Play your best half of football for the next 30 minutes as a group. Your best half of football. Look at the guy next to you, right? Look at him. Your best half of football. Somebody told you sometime in your life you had a chance of a national championship. You played as hard as you could for one half. Nobody would play harder. Go do that. Go do that. Go do that. They can't block you. Go do it. If something bad happens, get them together. We laughed at the kickoff return. So what? Come right back and play. The Gators set out to finish what they had started, and they pursued their shot at a national championship with passion and desire. Come out in a nice set. Running back Antonio Pittman and takes the ball, and then he's trying to run. He can't get away, and he'll be hit and drop behind the line of scrimmage. Oh! Troy Smith looks to throw and fires and it's incomplete. Broken up beautifully by the Gators. There's the snap to Troy Smith. Under a blitz from Siler. He steps up and avoids the blitz and looks for a grand run. But the Gators are going to make the tackle anyway by a helmetless Earl Everett who came in there without the headgear and made the big play. Oh, man. The Gators masterfully kept the chains moving and with that controlled the clock. Let it Sean went up the middle of the field. He breaks into the secondary. He powers over a Buckeye with a first down run. There's the snap to Leak. Leak looking, going for the middle, has Cornelius. Cornelius to the catch. The first down and across the 45. Ohio State made one first down in the third quarter. And eight plays for 12 yards in the third period. Trips to the left, twins to the right. Leak looking left, now going to run the ball. Come up the field, inside the 35, breaks to the right to the 30. Chris Leak coming out of bounds. The snap to Leak. Leak looking to throw and fires out to the left for Cornelius Leak. He makes the catch again, and he gets inside the 20-yard line. Fourth and goal, one-yard line. Off the left hash to snap to Tebow, trying to run to the right. He's in. Touchdown! Touchdown! Tim Tebow! And the Gators have put 40 on the scoreboard. It's 40-14. to 14. All season long, the Gators had been criticized for lack of style points. Troy Smith under pressure. Dropping back. He'll be hit. Drop the sack again. Oh, my! Jarvis Moss bear hunting him down at the eight-yard line. 
Now, they were showing the college football world the true definition of style. And there'll be no more snaps in Arizona. And the Gators run onto the field. The Buckeyes desert off into the locker room. The Florida Gators have won the national championship here at the University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale. The underdog Gators totally dominate Ohio State. And the Gators win their second national championship in football, win their second school national championship in less than 12 months, and become the first ever program to hold the national championship trophy in football and in basketball in the same calendar year. Oh, my! We've watched history here tonight. Coming in as a recruit, you, you dream about coming to the national title. You think that you're going to make the national title coming to Florida, but when Earth came and you see how the program changed and they kept changing. I mean, this is well deserved. You look at us, we have the, the toughest conference. I mean, the toughest conference in the nation, the toughest schedule, so we're prepared, you know. We we knew what type of team we were, you know, from the, the teams that we competed against. We knew we were a good team, we had a good defense, and we came out, you know, we kept, we got down early, but we punched them in the mouth and we were able to come back and, you know, pull out the victory. We played an underdog role and, you know, we just kept it in the team, kept preparing, and we were ready for the game. These guys are survivors, I mean, they're survivors. You know, they've come through a whole lot to get to this point right now. And uh, never underestimated Survivor, man. We came out here and we got it done. These guys, they did it. You know, they worked hard, they fought, tooth and nail, and they prevailed. And that's what the Gator Nation is all about, sticking together through all types of weather. We the best. We came out and proved what we had to prove like we've been doing all year. It's the same thing we've been doing. So uh, nobody give us credit for that. Nobody won't pay attention to us. But you got to look now. We're national champions. You know, we just came out here and, you know, we play hard as a unit and we got a W. I feel, I don't know how to describe it. Words can't describe it right now. I know, you know, we worked so hard during this offseason. We came out and set a goal to win this national championship. And we did it. And it just feels great right now. It's just the greatest feeling in the world to know that all that hard work and dedication has paid off. And it's just, uh, it's just the greatest feeling. My emotions are all over the place. I mean, I'm happy the game over and we came out on top, but really, I'm not ready for it again. When I accepted the head coaching job with the University of Florida, the reason I did that, I had an opportunity to get on the grandest stage and show young people what this is all about. Guess what? Your face now is across the country. <laughs> Don't do anything wrong. Yeah. Mm -mm. Make everybody proud to say that's Steve Harris, that's Reggie Lewis. You want to know why? You deserve that. You're a national champion. Yeah. Every, if you don't believe that, every young person is going to wake up and throw in a 91, a 95, a 20. Yeah. If you don't believe that, you don't understand what just happened. You are the elite of elite. Your lives will never be the same. Rolling up 370 yards of offense while limiting Ohio State to just 82 total yards, these Gators saved their best game for last. Hey, 
For the first time in NCAA history, a football team and a men's basketball team from the same school held national championships simultaneously. These Gators had played to near perfection in their final game, and as if implored by the very men who founded the sport back in 1906, they delivered the most perfect magical ending imaginable to the 100th season of Florida football. The Florida Gators were national champions. When you say it like this, that out of 100 years of a great football program, it's happened one time, that shows you the elite status that you're in. And uh, once again, the Donnie Youngs and Lawrence Wrights, Danny Werfels, those are all legendary names. Now you can add to that list the Dallas Baker, Ray McDonald's, Earl Everett's, because they're legendary figures. They're one of two teams to ever win a national championship. Yeah, I'm uh, whatever age I am, I think I'm 42 now, I forget after a while, but uh, I'll never forget that one. And it was like in slow mo, we were in a time warp. and. I remember looking down at Coach Strong and we had one more timeout left to freeze the kicker and we decided to just let him go ahead and kick it because uh, our, our fans were behind us 100%. And we took great pride in the fact that when we step in that stadium, that's our home. And in the 90s, the Gators didn't lose at home. And we have two years in a row now. We've played extremely well at home. Yeah, we had a couple close games, which you're always going to have close games. The bottom line is that team didn't give in. They found a way to fought, fight to uh, uh, get a hard-fought victory against South Carolina. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a great night. That was, uh, we knew that there were bigger things on the horizon if we took care of business that day. We felt that way, but uh, the bottom line is you're judged at Florida uh, because of the 90s on the ability to get to Atlanta and go compete and win an SEC championship. And, and I, I don't want to say it was a, a burden lifted our, off our back, but it felt like it. You know, that we had to get there somehow. The, the rally cry was get to Atlanta somehow. And then to finally win that thing there, that was, uh, that, that they, it's like you upheld your obligation when you got that done. Best Fridays in football is a great tradition we started here, and it's uh, our guy, a lot, of, a lot of programs, a lot of teams, Fridays are like going to the dentist's office. It's uh, not a good deal. Our, our Fridays, we work them extremely hard, but we also realize you're dealing with people, young guys, that you, you got to give them a little time to relax and have some fun too. And the most important part of a Friday to us there's two parts. One is the preparation. Number two is the fact you got to relax and get some sleep. If you don't sleep and you don't eat right and they're all tightened up, you're not going to be at your competitive excellence on Saturday. So uh, we take great pride in that and we have a routine and our players love it. Quarterbacks are judged, and I made this comment many, many times, quarterbacks are judged on not so many how many yards you're throwing for, but how many championships you won. And Chris joins a great legacy of quarterbacks from all the way from Shane Matthews through uh, Rex Grossman, now Chris Leak, and there's a guy behind him now that has to live up to it, and that's Tim Tebow. And you're judged very simply on how many championships you won, and Chris is obviously one of the great quarterbacks here at Florida now. Yeah, that, uh, the defense, I think, took exception to the 30-day layoff and the, basically the 30 days of uh, uh, bulletin board material. That, and our defense line's got great pride. You know, Coach Madison has developed probably the worst position on our team to be the strength. 
not probably, worst position on our team on and off the field to be in the strength of our team. And, and uh, I'd say them, but the whole team did, but them in particular took that 30 days to notice because they read a lot, they watch a lot, and obviously Coach Madison uses that to our advantage. Right near the end, you know, some people said that actually one of my players asked the first time they saw me real show motion was uh, in the, about three or four minutes left in the game. We got that last first down, and I knew it was completely over. And and uh, there were other times during the game I thought we played very well. But when you play, face a dynamic team, a talented team, you just never know until it's over. And when uh, Deshaun Wynn got that last first down, they measured it was a first down. That's when you, my knees got kind of weak, and I said it's over. And uh, and to think, and then that's another point, I just started watching our bench and watching our players and coaches. And uh, I, then I could see them in their eyes that it was over and they're national champs. Yeah, I think that the one, the one phrase we use or the one uh, word we use is investment. That's how you win those close games. And I, I have to believe that we are the most invested team in America this year. Uh, the way they played down the stretch, the way uh, they overcome, you know, uh, a variety of issues that we dealt with from injuries to other issues. And someone always stepped up. Perfect example, Steve Harris. Steve Harris became one of the premier defense linemen in the league uh, when he had to. And that shows you what kind of fight we had. And, and uh, it shows you a little bit about the seniors that we had. Well, the young guys don't make it without great leadership. Our young guys would not have played uh, uh, as well as they have. There's, there was no chance that we could perform at the level without freshmen helping us. But at the level they performed, they had to learn from someone. And at the top of my head, you think of Dallas Baker. Percy Harvin played well because of Dallas and Jamel. Uh, Tim Tebow played well because of Chris Leak, and it went on down the line. So our young guys were a product of the old guys' determination, leadership, and, and really practice habits. That was all uh, dictated by the older guys. Well, we take a great uh, deal of responsibility. When we, when we accept a young person in this program, we are their parents, we're their family. We're the, the, some of these young guys are four to five hours, 10 hours away from home. And I was 18 once. And you're forced with making a lot of decisions with your 18. A lot of them you're not ready to make. And if you feel like you're held accountable for those decisions and you have great respect for your coach and coaches, assistant coaches, uh, you'll make those right decisions. And that's also the fun part of the job. I mean, uh, there's nothing better to have your players around your children and your wife and eat dinner with them. And uh, we do it every Thursday night. And that's probably the best thing about uh, being a college football coach. It's neat because you take so much from them. You know, uh, football coach is great. Uh, being a football coach's family is not. Uh, and part of the reason we came to Florida because I felt with a small town, recruiting is, is rather regional that you could be a dad and still do this. And uh, that if you had to take what's important to me, winning national champs or being a great dad, I'll take being a great dad any time. And uh, they're into it. You know, I'm very blessed to have a healthy, intelligent, competitive uh, kids that understand what's going on. And they were all over it too, to, to sing the fight song after the game with them. And that's a tradition we've been doing for six years. And uh, we even said that before the game in the morning. Both girls came up and said, you know, this is a big one. We're going to sing the fight song with you. And, and that, uh, that kind of makes it worthwhile. Not, uh, not in this lifetime, maybe. I don't know, because we're recruiting. We're doing this. We're doing all kinds of uh, things to promote the university. And, and uh, our goal is very simple. We want to be the one school that everybody wants to be. It's very simple. We want to be everybody in the country wants to be like Florida. We're not there yet, but we're very close, and we're heading that direction.